Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of November 12th. I'll begin by talking about all of the activity we've had on the Earth-facing disk this week. We've had three X-class flares and seven M-class flares, mostly from this region 1890. Now with all these flares come solar storms, and sure enough we had one on the 9th and again one on the 11th. Now these weren't strong enough to reach NOAA's official storm threat level, but they were unsettled conditions which was enough to give us beautiful aurora and very bright aurora that dipped down into the tip of USA. You can see it up here at the top and also for the aurora australis you can see the aurora was strong and bright for a good long period of time that gave us beautiful aurora in new zealand and tasmania so it gave us beautiful pictures here's one from south dakota and we've got keller washington here we've got a beautiful dave patrick sent this in from ontario and we've got gorgeous jeff wallace sent this one in from elk island in canada here's one from alaska and for Aurora Australis, thank you Susan Says, she sent in this beautiful gorgeous picture and another one from Elk Island, you can actually see the rainbow uh, Aurora, which is extremely rare. And as a matter of fact, I got 248 retweets on this in my last check, I think it's gone up since then, and if you scroll down through all of these tweets, if you are one of these people on this list, thank you so much for joining the conversation, you are truly space weather ambassadors. So as we move back to the disk, you can see region 1890 has been the huge hit this week, but let's not forget that coronal hole that's actually passing through right now. It's been giving us some high speed wind, which has really helped enhance these really weak solar storms we've had as of late. Now if we go back to 1890, here's an X11 flare, it goes right there, boom, you can see it, pow. You can see the ejection being lifted off, all that dimming region, that's an ejection. It's kind of going off to the south, and we think maybe it's not really going to hit us all that much. But then we see the models and whoa, here's this huge monster. Where did this come from? You can see the structure is absolutely massive and it doesn't look like it's gonna go south of us at all. It looks like it's gonna hit dead center. As a matter of fact, when we flip the impact footprint so that north faces up, Earth actually passes right through the densest part of this structure. So which is it? Is it gonna hit us head on or is it gonna miss us to the south? Well, coronagraph images show that it might actually be a little bit of both. You've got this huge structure that's coming out south, but if you look closely, you do see this little halo. So at the very least, expect maybe some mild to moderate cell phone issues. Expect that maybe your GPS isn't going to work as well as you normally have it. Um, maybe broadband, internet connectivities won't be quite as good as you'd like it to be. Anything that has to do with satellite-based services. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, these are synoptic charts that show all of the active regions on the sun. The two vertical lines denote the east and west limbs, and they bracket the Earth field of view. Now you can see here on the far side, there's a lot of new active regions that are coming onto the disk and rotating away. You can see 1872, which has now been renumbered uh, 95 and 97. There's a lot of growth there, so that's, that's the player this week. It's already given us an M-class flare. You also can see spot 1875, which gave us that big far side blast, is also going to be rotating back to view this week. And as we return to the disk, don't count spot 1890 out yet because you can see it's still very active. As long as that delta region is there, as you can see it right there, that's the source of a lot of the flaring. We will continue to have that region be a threat to us. You can see all the electrical activity up here at the top. It shows you the thing is still actively flaring and then when it rotates to the uh, west limb, then it will start having to be a bigger contender for things like radiation storms. So we do need to be aware of that as it rotates off to the west. So this week looks to be pretty exciting. We've got a solar storm on the way that should hit us around the 13th. Now initial reports show that the uh, speed of this solar storm may be a little bit slower than, it, than the models anticipated. So it may hit us a little bit on the late side. But nonetheless, expect to have a little trouble with your cell phones and maybe your mobile broadband internet services and definitely your GPS over the next couple of days. And also we have our eyes on both the east and west limb because we have active regions on those limbs that are actively flaring and they could give us more, at least with the east limb, we'll be rotating and getting us more solar storms and the west limb we do have to worry about uh, potential for radiation storms. So it will be a very interesting week and everybody stay safe. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.